Well, good morning. So, in the last chapter, we looked at uh, the first two stages of an intimate relationship, the um, romantic love and the power struggle. And chapter seven is, is going to look at what's possible in today's world, the conscious partnership. And they define that as a conscious partnership as a dynamic, energetic pattern characterized by relaxed aliveness, positive affect, and joyful exchanges. Through the transformation that occurs in the safety of a conscious relationship, conscious partners reap individual and relational benefits that optimize their physical, emotional, cognitive, and spiritual well-being. And connecting is their daily experience. In Back to the Future fashion, it looks like two people wallowing in the bliss of romantic love, but this time it's real love. And the bliss has durability because they are participating in the energy of the quantum field. In a nutshell, it is consciousness <clears throat> that makes all the difference. It is consciousness that brings a relationship from reactivity to intentionality, from pain to pleasure, and from the hell of the power struggle to the pr paradise of real love. So they, <clears throat> if we look back at the history of couplehood, we discover sort of three forms that it has taken over the millennia. Hunter-gatherer societies, from a basic survival perspective that lasted for millions of years, opted for a simple pair bond. Over the last 10,000 years or so, with the rise of agricultural, agriculture, animal husbandry, and civilization itself, <clears throat> the arranged marriage evolved. It's really only in the last 300 years or so, with the rise of democracy and the end of monarchy, that the democratic, romantic uh, marriage, intimate relationship evolved. They go on to say, in in our view, <clears throat> the democratic romantic marriage is dying because it is no longer a participant in the evolutionary process and it's being replaced by the, collect by the collective consciousness with conscious partnership, which is a step forward toward real love and an ev evolving relational civilization. We call the conscious partnership the fourth stage of couplehood in human history. <clears throat> so they see sort of Evolve, the collective consciousness evolving from a more individualistic paradigm to a relational paradigm. Remember, we now live in a quantum universe where everything is connected to everything else. As the culture of individualism evolves into a relational culture, it makes sense that a relational culture would give birth to a new relational-centered form of couplehood whose agenda is the furtherance of a relational civilization. Not exactly what we have right now. And before examining what this conscious partnership might look like, they, also, they sidetrack into, back into the, looking at brain sciences and quantum theory. And it seems the brain is more efficient when we can both imagine or picture an outcome than if we just use words. Words come from the left hemisphere of the brain and are more, again, in the quantum uh, parlance, particle-like. Images come from the right hemisphere of the brain and are more wave-like. An integrated brain uses both as, as needed. The, co the concept in quantum physics that deals with this phenomenon is the particle wave duality, which is considered by mainstream quantum physics to be inherent in every form, from the smallest par particle to the universe itself, all of which emerge from the quantum field. And you say, <laughs> so what? Who cares? <laughs> what does this matter in real life? Well, <clears throat> The authors encourage couples to not only describe their dream relationship in words, but also to imagine it in images. And in the Imago system, one of the first things I do with couples is to ask them to create, create a relationship vision. If your relationship worked out ideally, what would it look like? You know? And even couples that are fairly conflicted, they know what they want. So, and this is uh, the process that happens when couples construct their future in the present by imaging, image, imagining their future as now, all right? And so, in a sense, we're participating in that quantum field. Now think about it. All of us who grew up in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s are part of the old individualistic paradigm. So there's little evidence yet of what this newer conscious partnership might look like. But there are clues. For one, it is conscious. And in the office, I, I tell my couple, that's half of what I do, help them become more conscious, more aware. 
That alone distinguishes from the contemporary marriage, which is based on the romantic love, which is a product of nature driven unconsciously by the survival instinct of the lower brain. Its replacement, conscious partnership, emerges out of the same survival drive, but with a different outcome because it's guided by the upper brain. The upper brain becomes intentional about survival. The lower brain reacts without reflection. And I would characterize most relationships, certainly ours was before we got into this. They're unconscious, they're old brain, they're reactive. If my partner came on too strong, my reactive response was to shut down. If I look, <laughs> step back and look at that and become more aware, pretty unproductive, but I did it for a long time. <clears throat> Secondly, it's a, relation, a relationship consciousness. If you think of the Latin, uh, con means with and shush from the uh, shiro to know, the con this, this conscious means to know with. Remember, consciousness is not a feature of the quantum field. It is the field. The field is consciousness itself. Partners will know with each other rather than know about each other. This knowing with, not knowing about, helps differentiate self from the other and facilitates connecting around and beyond their differences, preparing the ground for real love, which celebrates difference and holds it in a state of wonder. And lastly, they say it will be a partnership. The romantic model of couplehood tended to be hierarchical and thus unequal, because unconsciously it was modeled on the vertical model of monarchy. And I would have to agree, it, it tends to be hierarchical, historically. Competition, control, dominate. <coughs> Pardon me. Competition, control, domination, <coughs> and the necessity of being the best and winning at all costs is a value system that drives this social, cultural, personal structure. Hierarchy and inequality are indigenous features of most cultures and embodied in most marriages. And Hierarchy and inequality are the source of conflict for all the institutions, including marriage. So the authors see the next stage in human social evolution as a relational civilization which embodies universal equality, total inclusiveness, and the celebration of differences, and we see these as the embodiment of real love. In such a civilization, partnership will be a conscious choice and competition will be replaced by collaboration, control by cooperation, and domination by mutual support and real love. And obviously we're a long way from that, and we're sort of caught in the middle, but that's their view of where we're going, hopefully. <clears throat> Since the quantum field occupies the space between partners, conscious partnerships is an, is an oscillation between wave-like qualities and particle-like particle -like qualities. In other words, it's more a process than a thing. And they use the analogy of a garden, <coughs> which is always in flux. Think of our garden out there in the wintertime. But in spring, it looks quite different, summer, fall. And you think of, uh, you know, the, the sun, soil, water, um, air. It, uh, together, that creates something that goes far beyond what those components could create on their own something that is sim seemingly miraculous and far more than the sum of its parts. And so they liken the conscious partnership to a garden, just like our garden is in, in flux all the time, but it produces. A conscious partnership also remains in a constant state of becoming, changing from day to day and even moment to moment, depending on its context, that is, on the quality of the exchanges between partners who influence and are influenced by all of their other interactions. If we think of a conscious partnership as the occupant of the space between, it consists of interactions between two people that support the thriving of both partners and their relationship by creating and sustaining reliable and predictable safety, the essential ingredients of real love. And again, it comes back to what I've said many times, the key is safety. Safety is a necessary and sufficient condition the sine qua non of a conscious partnership. Without safety, couples can survive, but they cannot thrive. So next week, I'll look at how safety can be achieved and maintained. Okay, have a great uh, week. Merry Christmas to all of you. Happy holidays. 
Uh, hopefully, I'll keep going. I have the grandkids down here uh, over Christmas, so we'll see. But I think I'll be able to uh, meet you again next week. Have a great holiday. Cheers.